God says he's taking us to. You see, most times when God says he will do something in our life, and such things at variance to our human knowledge. Then definitely doubt will come. Because what God says can be unimaginable. It's, it's beyond our comprehension. So this is the reason why most of the time when God says he wants to do something for us, we ask questions. We express our doubts. We express our surprises at what God says he wants to do. When? Why? Because we are operating under human limitation. And each time we are operating under human limitations, we often ask the questions. Can it be? Can it be so? Can it be true? Can it be true? Can it be real? Can the experience of getting to a new realm be true. Myself, a new realm. When I've already retired to my situation, I think it is not possible. I look at the circumstances around me. How is this going to be removed? How is this going to be removed? Say it is not possible, Joe. Is we are we are operating under human limitation. It is human. But this morning, I want to let you know that you are not the only person that have found yourself in that situation. When you are look at your situation, prevailing situation and circumstances. You know, sometimes we lose out the fact that God specializes in impossibility. He makes the impossible possible. And actually, this makes him to be an awesome God, a mighty God. So, surprisingly, we are not the only person that has ever or will ever have we continued to express doubt. See, ya leno, awa ko leni a koko, ti o ma fi ye meji yi han. Or express fear. Tabi ton fi eru han. And a lot of things, when we hear what God says he wants to do. O po an kan kwe lu, ni ba ta ba gbon ti o lor nsa po nfe se. So let us just, let me just do one biblical exposition for us. E je ki nse, it took a lebi be li kan fun wa. And say one or two things this morning, then you will pray and will prophesy to your life. If God has spoken, he meant it. He's taking you to a new realm, it is left for you. Let's consider the story of Abraham and Sarah. In Genesis chapter 17, if you look at Abraham and Sarah, they express kung fu laughter at the intentions of God for them in different times. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Kung fu laughter. You know there is, there is a different. You know you can laugh. But you can laugh people to scorn. An extreme expression of doubt for what that person is saying. Because you think it is not possible. The same thing happened to Abraham and Sarah. At a different time, they express their disbelief, their doubt. 
Mwafi, in laughing God to scorn. Let me use that word. Permit me to use it. Mwafi, I babo mwaha. Ni kwa fi fi olon re ni eleya. Genesis chapter 17. Iwe Genesis. Let me start to read from verse 15. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarah thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. And then in verse 16, And I will bless her, and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her. And she shall be a mother of nation. Kings of people shall be of her. O Lord, we see we from Abraham we be out to shed Sarai. Aye, Reni, he walk in your peru corre. The Sarah, Sarah, ma, because the Sarah, the peru corre, you maje. He me out to busy fun. He me out to boldly ama kone kanku elu. Let your daughter wa. Bele me out to busy fun. Ongo si she ya o pauri lady. Let us clearly look at what God wants to do about this man that was about 100 years of, of age. Number one, God says he will give Abraham a son through an old woman. Now, working on my limitation, that this sounds incredible. But Number two, Ikeji. Sarah, his wife, shall be a mother of nation. Sarah, of, of nations. Sarah, ayare ye, yo di yauri lady. Awo. Now it is not only a nation, but nations. A woman of 90 years of age at this point in time. And then number three, what God wants to do that Abraham had. Kings of people shall shall be of her. Not ordinary people. Kings. And you know when you have kings, you have people under them. Now, let me just let us know. When you go to Shabbat seventeen, you see the same thing. This is not the first time that you see the same thing. This is not the first time that God said this to Abraham. This is not the first time that God said this to Abraham. Because we are talking about doubts and loving to scorn. If you look at um, Genesis chapter 17, now God told him in verse 2 I will make my covenant between me and thee, and we multiply thee exceedingly. And so, and Abraham fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, Abraham si doju bole. Olorun si ba soro pe. In verse four, ni ese keni. As for me, bi o se ti emi ni. Behold, my covenant is with thee. Ki ese maje mu mi wa kwelu. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. It was the she baba ori le de. This was the first time God was talking to him, was assuring him. And God went ahead in verse 5. He said, Neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham. But thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful. And they say, I will make nations of thee. And kings shall come out of thee. Now, this was a message to Abraham as a person. And he was talking to Abraham alone. He didn't mention Sarah in this place. So in this verse 1 to 6 that I've read to us. Abraham has no reason to doubt God. Because he has not spoken anything that will create in him or an impression in him that what God said is not possible. 
Nitori pe Olorun o ti so nkan eleyi ti o biro pe n to so yi ko le se se You know why? Se ma di Abraham had a son already. Abraham o ti bi omo okunrin and that son is called Ishmael. Omo okunrin yi oruko re ni Ishmael. So to make Abraham all what God has made as said is not a problem. Lati mu ke Abraham ko gbagbo nu to Olorun so ko ye ko je isuru fun. So all the thought was that God was talking about Ishmael, the son of Hagar, a housemate. So there's nothing special about that. But the table change. Level, level, change, level now change. When God now came home, where we have read in verse 15 to 17, God is now adding a new dimension to the promise. God is now being specific that this son will come from Sarah. And Sarah is going to be the progenitor mother of the nations and kings that was in mind of God at that point in time. So you can see where problem comes here. So now Abraham has to act under human limitation. There must be a conversation between him and God. At this point in time. Say, Father, I had you the first time you spoke. That I'm going to be a father of many nations and kings. But what you are saying now, I, I seem not to understand. Now you are now talking about Sarah. Uh -uh. This must be a joke of the century. That is the reason why he concluded within his mind that this must be incredible. This must be impossible. This cannot happen. So look at the response of um, Abraham in verse 17. Then Abraham fell upon his face. Abraham, what did he do? He laughed. He laughed. The first time he did not laugh. Simply because he thought that at the end of the day, Ishmael will carry out the promise of God. But now that God is now being specific about Sarah that was 90 years of old, You've been other years of old. There's no reason why you should not laugh. I call it this a scornful laughter. And he said in his heart, Please read it with me if it's not being projected. Open your Bible. Or wherever you are hearing just open your Bible because this is the word, the word of God, not the word of man. And he said in his heart. He did not, he didn't say it out. But in his heart. And just I told us in the VG. That the heart of the matter is the matter of the heart. Is the, the heart is, 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 the, is, is your personality. The heart, your mind, is the driver of, of your life. Where your mind is not. Then your body cannot be there. And that is what made the difference in our life. That it is what you take as priority in your mind. That your action will be driven to. It's going to dominate your action. Where you are today is a matter of the heart. Because I just visit my aunt. I must get to church after eight today. 
I was there because I was I've already made up my mind. So this man he said in his heart. So let all let all of you know that your heart speaks. Your heart speaks. I'm not talking much about that. Shall a child be born unto him? That is an hundred years of old. And like I've explained to us, that child Sarah, that is ninety years old, Bia Sarah, and say you have been so he justified in his heart why it seemed impossible. To him, age is not on his side. Age is not on the side of Sarah. So God, why are you tantalizing me? Let me use that word. <laughs> because there are some time where you think when God says he's taking you to a new level, you or a new realm, you think that God is tantalizing you. So Lord, why are you tantalizing me? So Lord, why are you tantalizing me? As far as I'm concerned, no, this is not possible. So Lord, why are you tantalizing me? So Lord, why are you tantalizing me? Because, but let me tell you, as far as I'm concerned, as a human being, you know I don't have faith like many people, and some of you that are hearing me. So I'm not the one, I can't judge Abraham. I can't condemn Abraham because it's just a woman be like me. When God actually told him initially that it's going to, this is going to happen, he didn't laugh. But when now God brought his awesomeness, his mightiness to a man with limitation in his imagination, in his ability, in his wisdom. There's no reason why you should not laugh. So it's, it's natural. And can hardly can anyone do otherwise. But let us look at verse 18. Open your scripture. So he gave himself a consolation. After his heart's conviction. He now spoke out. Oh, I saw it. And look at verse 18. Where say KGD? And Abraham said unto God. Abraham was saying, We fall Can you see what I was saying the other time? So to one in Timon Sosaju. Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. Ishmael, kill my lion, you are Jure. Can you see that? Shall I buy that is that Ishmael might live before thee? But kiss my lion, kill my lion, you are Jure. That's an issue here that I want to. Make it stop a little bit to talk about. As relate to you. And as relate to me. You see, many times, is it that Abraham is now suggesting that, Lord, what you are saying, let's forget about it. But here I've already had a son. And it is better for that son to do, to produce, to manifest. To make it real what you are saying. Abraham. It's now suggesting to God. Children of God, we will, I will not move forward until we solve this issue. And you hey. must solve it too. Because this is the reason why some of us will not move beyond where you are now. Many times we as a person we make suggestions to God. You 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 remember sometimes say, Well, Lord, let me be where I am. This one is fine, it's okay. Let's work with this. I haven't work for two years to make sure I gain admission. And I was running out. I just told God. I just give me any cost. I just let me go to university and read. I just let me go to university and read. I just let me go to university and read. I will not become. 
I, I was suggesting to God just like this person. You know, you have many people like that, you that you are now suggesting to God, thinking that what God said is not possible. He say, Oh, that is my smile my lead before you. May I tell your children of the living God? Your good can be the enemy of your best. And the second best can be the enemy of the best of God for your life. Take note of that. Because that is the situation of many of us. Look at Genesis chapter 19 verse 15 to 17. If you look there very well, and I want us to see it very well, you will know this was the problem of Lots. When God, the angel came, and they said he must escape to the mountain. And he was now suggesting to the angel that look, as far as I'm concerned, let us look at it. Look at it in verse 15. Can you, are you there? Are you there? He said, when the morning dawned, the angels urged Lord to hurry, saying, Arise, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. And listen to this. And when he lingered, the man took hold of his hand, his, and his wife's hand, and the hands of two daughters, and the Lord being merciful to him, and they brought him out, and set him outside the city. So it came to pass, when they had brought him outside, when I thank God I'm out of this city, that is enough for me. Now that they said unto him, Escape for your life. Do not look back. You nor stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountains. Lest you be destroyed. That was the standard of God for him. But he was contented and satisfied with the fact that he has escaped. From Gomara. Let me stay very near to Gomara. That when God has destroyed Gomara, perhaps I will come back. But for this month, a Lord, that you asked me to go, it is very, very difficult. So let me stay there. You know, sometimes God will not argue with you. Because you decide to take your second best. But sometimes you think that good is good is the best for you. But that is what the problem of this man. That is the man called uh, Lord. And so he, he requested that please know my Lord. He said, now your servant has found favor in your sight. You have increased your mercy, which you have shown me by saying, by, by saving my life. Listen, he said, but I cannot escape to the mountains. Many times when we want to do our will, you will give excuse to God. And he said, let some evil overtake me and I die. Can you imagine that? 
says, see now, this city is near enough to flee to. And it is a little one. Please let me escape there. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. And he said to him, Oh, see, I have favored you concerning this thing also. In that I will not overthrow the city for which you have spoken. But that was the problem of Lot. He did not escape to the level God wanted him to escape to. Because this is not my major. Uh, a subject of exposition. I just digressed there to speak to somebody here today that sometimes I don't behave like I did so many years ago. I said you should not behave the way I behaved sometimes ago. Settle for second best or the good of your life. You must go for the best. But look at what, but look at what happened. Because they did not go to where they're supposed to go. Look at what happened to Lot. In verse 26. But his wife looked back behind him. And she became a pillar of what? Of sorts. The choice of Lord provided opportunity to his wife to look back. And it became a pillar of Lot of, of sorts. So the two of them are to blame. The husband, you are the leader of the family. Most of what your wife, your children are suffering today is a product of your discussion, of, of, of decision. See the waywardness in the society. See the waywardness in the society. Do you teach your children the way of the Lord? Do you raise the faith of your wives? And now you are complaining. You are talking about your children not behaving well. The society is, you know what is happening in our society now. By the virtue of my position, I come to realize. That the root cause, the root cause of many problems with the children are from the home. We carry out a research in my area there where we set up our school. You know, that is in the rural areas. The, the problem they give was also centered on the family. Then we came to Bodhija sides. We carry out a research. What we also discover again center on the family. But the problem was in various dimensions. I won't talk about that now. But just to prove to you. So it's very, very important. So Lord, the wife of Lord has opportunity to look back because the man settled for the second best. That is the problem of many of us today. We settle down for our second best. Where God wants us to be is not where we are. And that was what this man was saying here. That and that each man might live before you. Taking the second best. I want to prophesy to your life. The spirit that wants you to settle less than what God designed for your life. By the power 
call of the living God. They will get disengagement from your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Because it is very dangerous. I declare upon your life that you will not settle less than what God intended for you. The plan of God for your life will come to pass. In the mighty name of Jesus. So he says he's taking you to a new level. A new realm. Please don't settle less. But we thank God for God no went ahead. Because notwithstanding the doubt of Abraham, God went ahead to make his mind known to him without any doubt. Unequivocally. In Genesis, let us look at it in 17, 19. And God said, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed. Sarah, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant. And with his seed after him. So God now focus on Sarah. The person that Abraham has written off. Now God was now more definite. In dealing with Abraham. Abraham In verse 19 that I've just read to you. Four things that God says is going to do. Number one. Your wife Sarah. Not Agar. As you thought. Is the one I'm talking about. Number two. There is going to be a son through her. That, that is called God. Isaac. I look around, maybe this is the first time that a child will be named before birth. And, and then number three. three. Establishment of everlasting covenant. If not a just a mere one. Today we are still working under that covenant. And then number four. Isaac seed. Not is my seed. That is going to benefit from the covenant. So there is no ambiguity in God's plan for Abraham. Though this was beyond human imagination. But God made this plan known to him. Did it come to pass? Look at 17 verse 21. God said, but my covenant will I establish with Isaac. Which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this time in next year. And God, what happened to us 22? And he left off talking with him. And God went off from Abraham. And so what happened? It happened. But again, in Genesis chapter 18, the same kind of scornful laughter that Abraham expressed was also the same thing that uh, Sarah also did. You can see what is happening now. Look at it in verse. Let us look at chapter 18. I'm going to verse 12. But for you to have proper understanding, let me start to read from verse 9. I won't talk about anything about it, but follow me. The angels, after they have eaten, the angels, after they have eaten, the angel, after they have eaten, well, I want to to they said unto him, we we fuk, eh? Where is Sarah thy wife? Uh, Sarah, yeah, read that. And he said, si we pay? Be old, Wo? in the tent. No ago. And he said, si we pay? I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. E to pada to wa, ni a and lo, Sarah ya, thy wife shall have a son. Si es, si Sarah, yeah, re, yole, oma, and konekan. Abraham had it in the tent, and Sarah had it in the tent door. Sarah, si go, li e no ona go. Which was behind him, behind Tio Abraham. Tio wa, le, yon, konina, now Abraham, Abraham and Sarah were old. Yabra, mo, Sarah, 
old, well stricken in age, and it seems to be said to be with Sarah after the manner of women. When she had that, like the husband, like the husband, therefore, verse 12, therefore, Sarah laughed with himself, saying, After I am waxed old, and I have no pleasure. And my Lord being old also. Can you see my and my Lord being old also? But thank God in verse 13. And the Lord said unto Abraham, We have heard the Sarah love. Saying, Shall I surely be a child? Which I am old. But he has love. So you can see this scornful laugh of the two of them. But the point I'm driving over is to express the extremity of their doubt. You too can be in that situation. Doubt your doubts. But how God, God prove himself? I say, however, God proved himself. I speak to your life today. Notwithstanding your doubts, God is going to prove himself in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Look at it in Genesis chapter 21. Reading from verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he has said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. For Sarah conceived and be a Abraham a son in his old age. And he said at the set time of which God has spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bear to him, Isaac. Abraham Isaac. Can you, can you imagine what has taken place? From the analysis I, I have just given to us. From chapter 17 verse to, to, to chapter 21. The time of the time of doubts of Abraham and Sarah. Which I have known explained to us. Elei but something happened. God put a stop to their doubts. I speak to your life once again. Against all odds. Beyond your imagination. Divine stoppage will come to your doubts. You are not, you are not sure what you are saying. I say you are going to be so favored that you are going to receive you are going to receive divine intervention that will put a stop to your doubts in the mighty name of Jesus before I round up look at another one the Israelites in uh, uh, Ezekiel chapter 37 they said, Our bones are dry, verse 11. In chapter 37. Our bones are dry. Our hope is lost. And we ourselves are cut off. That is the situation of some people hearing me now. Oh, you have been sacked? For some years, you have been looking for baby. The doctor has said that sickness manage it. You are going to die by it. You have lost so many opportunities. And the possibilities of possible of, of that thing coming back again or be possible is no longer there. 
person to help you, they have gone. And to fair or law one what law. Age is not on your side. Or your reality law. Look at the situation in Nigeria. Why boy shall in Nigeria? It's as if things are not working. Shall not be broken. Can or then no call it. Everything has broken down. Broken can or the or the yalule. Within the within the, the last few years. Where or do be where they say it by what? We have gone to economic recession several times. Where, wounded, I, rise up. Wounded, rise up. So it is very easy for us to conclude. It is possible for us to conclude. To say our bones are dry. Our hope is lost. And ourselves, we ourselves are cut off. So these people they sentence themselves to bottomless pit of hopelessness. But look at the supernatural dimension. Now in verse 12, God says, if we open their graves, I say, God will open your graves. You say, I will bring them up again from their graves. I will put my spirit in them. And they shall live and place them in their divine place of their location. That is the essence of the revival in the valley of dry bones. God did what he promised. May I tell you as you finish, as we pray this morning, let me announce to you, God has not finished with you yet. I say God has not finished with you yet. You know why? You are, sti you are still alive. So what is the excuse or excuse that you are thinking that God cannot usher you into a new realm? Are you considering your age? Are you considering your background? Are you considering your education? Are you considering lack of capital? Oh, what of the state of earth? It's a good thing to consider. What of your marital status? What of the carryover of the ancestral course that you know you are passing through? What about your loneliness? But God says, I should announce to you. Notwithstanding all this reason, God remains, God remains faithful. What is expected from you today? You need to doubt your doubts. Doubt your doubts. Like Peter, like Mary, like Elijah, like Noah, oh, like Ezekiah. Like Josabat, like Joshua. In, in the book of 1 Kings, chapter 17, 9 to 10, write it down. Go and do personal study on this scripture. God told Elijah, Go and meet a widow of Sarephath. There we feed you. It is not an easy thing, though. No. It is not an easy thing. Dave, uh, Elijah could have asked, ah, What is this widow going to do for me? But he took a step of faith. He doubted his doubts. He went. And he was fair. As he bore. In the same way too, in Genesis chapter 6, verse 13 to 14, God, God told Noah to build an ark for safety. Because rain, flood is coming. That's going to destroy the entire world. Noah did not doubt God. In verse 22, he went and built the ark. Other doubted. Other doubted. But what God said, they allowed their doubt to be, to be alive. They spared their doubts. They didn't doubt their doubts. They perish. But Noah doubt, doubted his doubts. He built a hack. He entered it. And he was saved. 
In the same way too, when you talk about Ezekiah, Isaiah chapter 37, verse 5 to 7, the Assyrian besieged the land of Judah. Assyria, Judah. Sennacherib. He threatened Ezekiah. And of course, we know the credential of this king. But Isaiah, Isaiah, Ezekiah cried unto the man of God. And the man of God told him, Oh, the battle is not yours. It belongs to God. Just wait and see what I'm going to do. Ezekiah left by the reason and the strength of the word of God. He prayed. When you get to chapter verse 36, he wants a good night. He wants a good night. He wants a good night. And angel killed 185,000 chariots, carried out of chariots, ride out of chariots of this Assyrian king. Angel, he can so so. All of that, the law, to pay egbe, legbe, egbe, run, egbe, run, pan. I want more going Assyria. Ezekiah doubted his doubt. Ezekiah, oh shit, he died with his doubt. Joseph did the same thing. In Second Chronicles chapter twenty, we chronicle verse fourteen to eighteen. They were also besieged by a number of country. The the Ammon and all the rest. Over Judah. Lord Judah Joseph cried. Joseph And God told him too. That Joseph. This battle is not yours. God told him. Appoint singers. Singers. They are enough. Don't go for ammunition. That was beyond imagination of human being. Any human being without that. But this person, doubting his doubt, he appointed singer. And they were just blowing trumpets. They were saying, Praise the Lord. For His mercy and Doris forever. Verse 21 to 22. I believe you are following me. 21 to 22. They were singing. As they were singing, God divinely laid a bush for the enemy. And that was the, that was the end of it. Wall of Joshua, Joshua in the same way too, there was wall of Jericho hindering them from getting to the land of uh, where they were going to, the land of Canaan. God just told him, gather your people, the priest with the ark, go around the city six times, at the seven times, seven days, blow the trumpet. See what is going to do. We are going to do. There is no need for caterpillar. caterpillar. And look at it. In verse twenty. As they blow the trumpet, the wall fell flat. And they enter. Mary. Maria also did the same thing. Oh, she on He doubt his doubts. Oh, she made him buy a Now God and angel told him. Angel is often that you are going to have. You are going to be. You are going to have a child. But oh, be a mark. And he said, How is it going to be? Only born here. Yes, sir. Look at. I'm. I'm a virgin. I will me. I don't know a man before. Me or Tim Mark only can carry. But eventually, in verse thirty-eight, she went in. Went in. Went in. He said, Let you go. Let it be to me according to your word. Is somebody here today that's going to say the same thing? Are you also going to join Peter? In Luke chapter 5, he has toiled and toiled and toiled throughout the night. And Jesus told him, Now it is time. Launch to the deep. Well, as I said, I'm not condemning Peter as I did not condemn Abraham because they are human beings. Every time you are working under limitation of human beings, you are going to sustain your doubts. And your doubt is going to contaminate your faith. But don't stay there. And that is why I said doubt your doubts. Doubt will come but you have to puncture it. 
Then so the same thing happened to Peter. Oh, can I look at I like that word. Look at it in your scripture. In verse five. He said, nevertheless, at your word, I will do it. I will all know the story. So these people have mentioned. They have listened to that God. But they doubted their doubts. They responded possibly to God's intention. And what happened to them? They moved to a new realm. As applied to them. Look at them. Noah, Ezekiah, Josiah, they were not, they, they, they didn't stand in the same position. So when you doubt your doubts, what will happen? God is going to overrule all Indian protocols. And at this hour, whatsoever reason you have that have been sustaining your doubts up till now, contaminated your faith. This hour that I'm talking to you now, you are listening to me now. God says He's taking you to a new realm. Whatsoever hindrances, protocol, rules and regulation, all secure from demonic power, the limitation of your own knowledge, God is going to overrule you. And He will take you to to a new realm. A new chapter is open unto you. As you are hearing me now, may I announce to you that God wants to rewrite your history. Are you, do you get, do you, do you note that? So, case, it might be quite different from what your members of family are passing through. Because God says it's going to rewrite your history. You say it's never happened in your family. You are meant to be a and you are going to be a pesetta. You can say it has never happened among your colleagues. But I speak to you. They are going to jump protocol. I said they are going to jump protocol because of you. It has never happened to your friends. It's beginning from you. In the name of Jesus, this and many things will be done to you. In a supernatural way, in the name of Jesus, all what you need to do this morning is to doubt your doubts. Hear your fear. Fear your fear. I always tell people. Fear the those who they are fear. So as fear the fear your fear. And you go you will come to know that there's nothing there. Go with this. Are you ready? Fear the those who they are fear. I'm ready. Are you? Fear the those who they are fear. Are you ready to go to new level? So Satan Are you ready? Are you? Melo, Are you ready, ready to go to a new level? So, Shetan, in Matthew chapter 11, verse 22, he and uh, Jesus actually said unto them, I have faith in God. God. For verily I say unto you, I'm reading verse 23, that for so whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his hands. Doubt come from the hearts. Sometimes what we are speaking is different from what is going on in our hearts. But shall not doubt. But shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. He said he shall have whatsoever he said. In Matthew 21, 21. Jesus answers. And said, Verily I say unto you, if you have faith and doubt not, and doubt not, and doubt not, the doubt will come. But you doubt it. You write, you write it off. Jesus Christ said, You shall not only do this which I have done to the fig tree, you shall not only. Do this which I have done to the fig tree. But also, if you shall say unto this mountain, without remote, and thou cast into the sea, 
it shall be done. Yo, Can you be on your feet this morning? You, do, Lord, yes, sir. Lord, Lord, you yes. must doubt your doubts. Oh, Lord, she, me, she, me, Start she, to me. operate in a new level now. Because it is human. It is human. To doubt what seems to be higher than their imagination. But let me tell you. Yes, it is divine. To doubt your doubt. So that you can you experience supernatural. So will you close your eyes and start to talk to God? That to, this morning I doubt my doubts. As he did to the family of Abraham. But, but and Israelites. Peter and Mary. Peter and, Mary and the host of them. He can do more for you. He says he's taking you to a new realm. What new realm are you asking for? I believe you are talking to God now. Speak to him. Doubt your doubts. As you discharge your responsibilities. You are doubting your own doubts. You must discharge it. God will also discharge his own responsibility. Therefore, dissolve your doubt this morning. Cancel your doubt this morning. Nullify your doubt this morning. Increase your belief. Increase your faith. Increase your hope. Open your mouth and speak to him. I'm not certain for the second best. I'm I'm not setting for the good because it, it, it is the enemy of my best. I'm going to a new realm. I believe you are praying. I received this prophetic declaration this morning. God says he's taking me to a new realm. A new realm notwithstanding what is happening around me. Lord, I believe your word. I believe you are praying. I want to, to see you at the next level. A new realm, a new realm. Are you really praying? Lord, help me this morning. This word must come to pass in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Can you open your mouth and say in the name of Jesus the dynamite of Holy Spirit the dynamite of Holy Spirit to dissolve every doubt in your heart to take, to, to take you to a new realm like I have said to you it is human to doubt it is human to doubt when you see things that are beyond your imagination yes you can doubt but it's only divine that you doubt your doubt so that you will be able to express the supernatural say father in the name of Jesus let the dynamite of Holy Spirit dissolve every doubt in my heart concerning what you say you are going to do for me particularly taking me to a new realm children of the living God wherever you are wanting to pray prayer is very important Ezekiah, when he heard the word of God, he went to the temple and prayed. And so the dynamite of Holy Spirit dissolved the doubt in him. Can you say, Lord, let the dynamite of Holy Ghost, the dynamite of Holy Ghost, dissolve doubt in my heart. Sometimes you cannot do it alone. You need divine intervention. It's a, it's a monster. Doubt is a monster. Doubt is a, is a monster. It's a rock. It's a mountain. Rocky mountain. That will not make you to go to the other side. But as for the dynamite of Holy Spirit, what happened to Jericho, the wall of Jericho will happen? What happened to Jericho, the wall of Jericho will happen? Express your mind to God now. Can you ask, Lord, divinely lift me up, lift up my faith in you. 
Lord, increase my faith. In any way, my faith has been contaminated. When you entertain fear, your faith is contaminated. So, for that reason, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, purify my faith this morning. Purify my faith, O Lord, from all form of contamination that is delayed my miracle. Deparing me from spreading the supernatural. Increase my faith, O God, concerning this issue in my life. Are you fighting the battle? Are you sick? Have you been expressing failure? Are you expressing delay? It's as if they are denying you. It's as if you are over age. It's as if your background is not working to your favor. But that does not really matter. All what I was telling you this morning, your, your faith must be increased by doubting your doubts. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to pray. Say in the name of Jesus, I clear all obstacles, all mountains. Obst obstructing me moving to the new realm. Lord, in, I'm not doing so by my own name. I'm not doing so by my own power. I'm doing so by your name. New mountains before me. Clear up in the mighty name of Jesus. Clear up in the mighty name of Jesus. Clear up in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. Lord, we bless you, worship. You. We give you the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Your resounding name. Amen. I want to prophesy to your life. Because we are we are now in the realm of the supernatural. Just align your faith with my own. Let it even be bigger than my own. I want to make some declaration concerning your life. Concerning your family. Concerning your children. Concerning your work. To doubt your doubts. You must say it thunderous amen. So I stand in the name of Jesus Christ. To declare upon your life. Upon your family. Upon your children upon your wall and accelerated movements and accelerated movements into a new realm of prosperity a new realm of fruitfulness a new realm of breakthrough a new realm of sand air a new realm of peace a new realm of joy a new realm of positive flow a new realm of divine connection to your destiny in the name of Jesus a new realm of goodness a new, a new realm of righteousness a new realm of holiness a new realm of marital peace a new realm of marital blood a new realm of blessing, a new realm of grace, a new realm of mercy, a new realm of favor, a new realm of beauty, a new realm of honor, a new realm of destiny fulfillment, a new realm of comfort, and a room of greatness. In the mighty name of Jesus, it is done in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Seven powerful amen. It is well with you in Jesus' name. Can you be seated? I want to appreciate us this morning.